welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and this is our third video on distance on the earth. In this particular video, I'm going to take you through how to change from decimal degrees into degrees, minutes and seconds and back again. I'm going to show you how to do this manually as well as on the calculator. This is aimed at students right across Australia in Queensland, Western Australia, Victoria and Tasmania, mainly in senior curriculums of mathematics. And the list is there, so if that's you, welcome to the channel. So firstly, let's talk about different ways that we can represent an angle. Firstly, you'd be very familiar with decimal degrees, such as 48.19 degrees. And this is how we represent different types of angles. And we've also been talking about angles when we look at Earth geometry, which is our angles of latitude and longitude. Now we can also express this as degrees, minutes and seconds. And that's presented using the degree symbol for the 48. 20 with a single dash for minutes and a double dash for seconds. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about why we do that in a moment and how to get there. And also we do radians. So radians is not something that's part of the syllabuses that were just previously listed on the screen. This is part of senior mathematics and university mathematics and it's not going to be covered in this video. But you may still wish to stay tuned just to find out how to do those conversions and also how to do it on the calculator. Okay, so the first question you might be wondering is, why would I do it this way? Well, it goes back a long time in history. In fact, quite a few thousand years before Christ. The Babylonians were basing their coordinate system on degrees in a circle. So they clearly understood that the Earth was a sphere. In modern mathematics, we use something called base 10. And you'd be familiar with that with your decimals. So the word decimal comes from DEC, DEC meaning 10. So that's what our system is based on. And it comes based on that Arabic, Aramaic um, numeral system. Now the Babylonians used base 60 and we still have this reflected in our culture with the way that we tell time using minutes where there's 60 minutes in one hour and seconds with 60 seconds in one minute. So that's kind of remained a remnant from those old times and that's why we have this minutes and seconds in our geometry looking at angles. So enough of the history lesson, let's get on to some maths. Let's talk about how to convert from decimal degrees into degrees and minutes and vice versa again. So most of us, as I've mentioned before, would understand that an angle is based usually on a decimal number. So 48.19 degrees actually means 48 degrees as a whole number plus 19 hundredths of a degree. That's what that 0.19 means. Now you might be thinking, well, duh, I've been doing decimals and whole numbers since grade seven. But the reason I'm bringing this up right now is because you need to understand that these numbers are additive in nature. So I'm just taking you through with the decimal degrees that we can add the number 48 plus 19 hundredths gives us 48.19 degrees. And we do the same with the minutes and the seconds, which is going to be really evident in a moment. So if I have 48 degrees, 20 minutes and 5 seconds, what that means is 48 degrees plus 20 minutes which was represented by the dash, plus five seconds represented by the double dash. Now, in order to do your conversions, you need to recognize this additive element. Now, these 20 minutes actually represent 20 minutes in one hour. Now, we know there's 60 minutes in an hour, so 20 divided by 60 can be simplified to 2 over 6 or 1 over 3, a third of an hour. And the five seconds represents five seconds in one minute or one twelfth of a minute. Now, when we're doing these conversions, we're actually going to convert those seconds into fractions of an hour. So there are 60 seconds in one minute, 60 minutes in one hour. 60 times 60 is 3,600 seconds in an hour. So we need to do our fractions for our seconds out of 3,600. So now let's do a worked example together. We're going to convert that 48 degrees, 20 minutes and 5 seconds into decimals. And I'm guessing this is the one you're probably want to, going to do the most because minutes and seconds aren't as familiar to most of us, whereas we understand decimals. So firstly, we're going to do some additive components. First, we're going to focus on the minutes. We're going to change that into a fraction out of, of 60 because there are 60 minutes in one hour. So we change that to 20 divided by 60. If you do that on your calculator as a division, the answer will be 0.333. And there'll be a little dot represented here to represent that that 3 goes into infinity because it's a third. Okay, so we're now going to add the 48 degrees to the 0.333 and we end up with 48.33 degrees. So we're halfway there. We've already converted our minutes and it was as easy as that. 
Now we need to convert the seconds. Now remember I mentioned before that there are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, so therefore there are 60 times 60 seconds in an hour, 3,600. So when we're converting these five seconds, we need to do that as a fraction out of 3,600 because we're gonna also convert that to a fraction of an hour, just like we did with the minutes. So now we're gonna do that division on our calculator and we get 0 0.0013 and then the eight is repeated into infinity. And finally, we're gonna add this number to the 48.33 degrees that we found in step three. So now we've got 48.33 plus 0 0.00138 and so on, and we end up with 48.3347 degrees. Now you notice if I've just rounded off to two decimal places there, the impact of the seconds is basically minimal. It gets completely rounded off. And that's why I've shown that answer with four decimal places. But typically two decimal places is fairly typical to present your degrees. Well, obviously when you've only got five seconds as a fraction of an hour, it's not much at all. And so it really doesn't even register. So that's how we convert in that direction. Let's convert back in the other direction back to degrees to minutes and seconds. So firstly, I'm gonna ignore the whole number 12, that's our 12 degrees. We're gonna focus on the decimal, 0 0.84 of 60 minutes gives me, when I multiply that, remember of means multiply, that 0.84 means 50.4 minutes. Okay, so I've converted the decimal part, everything after that decimal place into minutes. So I can add now, just the minutes part to the whole number. I've got 12 degrees and 50.4 minutes. Now, I'm not quite there yet because I don't want any decimal places when I'm presenting in minutes and seconds. I've really got to convert this 0.4 part now. So what I'm gonna do is work out what that fraction is of 60 seconds. 0.4 multiplied by 60 gives me 24 seconds. So I'm gonna add the 24 seconds to the degrees and the minutes and I end up with 12 degrees 50 minutes, 24 seconds. So it's actually a little bit easier going in this direction because I don't have to multiply by 3,600. And the reason for that is, is that I did it by 60 first and then this by 60 again. So that second part already did actually get multiplied by 3,600. Right, let's talk about how to do that on the calculator. Okay, something important to be aware of when you're using a calculator is that you need to be in something called degrees mode. Now, if you recall earlier in the presentation, I talked about a way of presenting uh, degrees was also in radians when we we're expressing angles. So if we're gonna be doing it in degrees, and that's what we're doing in this unit here, you need to have a little D on your screen. If your screen has a little R that has somehow appeared there by accident, that means you're in radians mode. Now the calculations will look very similar, but when you get your answer, they're gonna be wrong if it's in radians mode and you're looking for degrees. So it's very important you check that, especially if you're doing something like math methods, where you are moving between degrees and radians, depending on what the topic is. Or if you're a teacher like myself, sometimes you might teach a subject using radians, for example, with methods in one class and then move to another class and then be presenting in degrees and then realize that you haven't changed your calculator over and you're giving your students all the wrong answer, has happened to me before. So the way to fix that is to press your shift button and press mode. And then it's a very quick fix, three for degrees, four for radians if you're in methods. So it's always a good idea just to check that D is on your calculator before you get started. Okay, let's do our first example that we did earlier where we changed from the minutes and seconds to decimals. Let's do that directly on the calculator. Now, after I teach you this, you're gonna wonder why on earth would I do it manually when the calculator does it so quickly? It is a bit of a godsend, but it's important that you know both ways. In case, for example, you got a multiple choice question where the process was written out and you had to choose the right process. So it's a good idea to understand what's actually going on. So firstly, let's type in 48, and then we press this little button here, the degrees button. Now you'll notice I'm working on a Casio calculator here. If you're working on a Texas Instruments or a Sharp calculator, you're gonna to need to find a tutorial for that. But hopefully the rest of the tutorial with the manual components been useful for you. So we're gonna also plug in the 20 and notice that the degree symbol isn't changing to a minute symbol or a second symbol. Don't worry about that too much. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So now I've used this button, I've pressed it three times after each number, every time I wanted to indicate the change. Now, if I press the equals button, voila, notice it changes for me to 48 degrees, 20 minutes, and five seconds. It's done that automatically for me. 
but I'm not quite there because I wanted to change to decimals. So to do that, I'm going to press this button one more time and yay, it's done it for me, 48.3347 degrees. Okay, so that was pretty easy going in that direction. But what about back the other way? I want to go back to minutes and seconds. So I'm going to do 12.84 this time. I'm going to press the equals button on the calculator and then I'm going to press my degrees button and press boom, it's done. It's already changed to minutes and seconds. It's that simple. Now you might be stuck in an exam and be thinking, I don't remember what to do to go this way to that way. What do I do? If in doubt, press your equals button and then press the degrees button. It's that little one there that the mouse cursor is pointing on to. And if you try that a couple of times, it's bound to come up with the minutes and seconds eventually. Okay, so that's how we do it on the calculator. Now in my next video, which is coming up hopefully over the next week, I'll be creating some complex problems using past papers. And I will maybe split that into a couple of videos so that it doesn't take too long to watch each one. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much again for joining me and for subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to hit your notifications button so that you find out every time I produce a new video. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook as well. I make announcements there too. Have a lovely day.